Welcome to the second of our series of videos designed to prepare you for reading Dante's Inferno and for our discussions. In this brief video, I want to introduce two keys for reading Dante's Hell, the principle of the contrapasso and the map of Dante's Hell. Contrapasso comes from the medieval Latin contrapassum, which combined contra or against and pati or to suffer. In other words, to suffer the opposite, according to some ratio or correspondence between the punishment and the sin. In effect, Dante applies throughout the Inferno in a poetic and highly inventive and suggestive manner, the originally biblical law of retaliation, according to which the punishment matches the crime, as in Leviticus, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Dante actually introduces the term for the first time in the Italian language in Inferno 28, when the pilgrim encounters the sower of discord Bertrand de Born, a Provençal troubadour poet who stirred up trouble between Henry III of England and his father, Henry II. Bertrand is punished for, by having his head severed from his body. Dante encounters Bertrand last among the sowers of discord, holding his head like a lantern, and the head speaks to Dante, the pilgrim, in the last lines of that canto. And here is Gustave Doré's fantastic illustration of this episode on the left side of the screen. Because I sever those so joined, I carry, alas, my brain dissevered from its source, which is within my trunk. And thus in me, one sees the counter penalty, contra passo. Dante's invention of the punishments of the sinners of his hell represent one of the main structural features of the poem, and they invite commentary and interpretation. As readers, we need to ask in every instance, what is the sin and what is the relationship between the sin and the punishment that Dante has fashioned? The relationship of sin to punishment offers insight into the nature of the sins. Dante establishes this as an issue for his readers from the very beginning. In Inferno 3, for example, with the neutrals, those who never took a side, this is an original category of sin that reflects Dante's character, the neutrals, are condemned to the vestibule of hell as though hell shuns them. How does the punishment of the neutrals described in Inferno 3, verses 34 through 69, reflect in an ironic and polemical way the nature of ethical lethargy? Perhaps we can discuss this at our next meeting. Now, besides understanding the principle of contrapasso, it's vitally important to know where you are in hell, and therefore we need to have a look at the map of hell. The moral significance of the geophysical structure and topography of hell is itself an explicit subject of the poem, and the first and never failing rule of that system is that down is worse. A major division is between upper hell and lower hell. You can see illustrated in the bottom part of this slide. Upper hell contains sins of incontinence characterized by the failure to restrain or control bodily appetites for food and or sex, or to seek after material goods as if they were food and or sex. Lower hell is worse because it contains sins of violence and sins of fraud. Something important to keep in mind is that the order of Dante's hell is based upon an anthropology that considers man to be made up of vegetable, animal, and human natures. If you think of it like plants, people need food and sex, and higher up the scale, like animals, people can move about, but only humans have reason. Sins of the concupiscent appetite in continence are least blameworthy because they are the expression of man's lower aspect. Those of the irascible appetite, violence are punished in the first part of lower hell, and those of the intellectual appetite or will, that is sins of fraud, are punished farthest down. The farther down in hell you go, the more intellectual, the less bodily, and more specifically and humanly willful, i.e. rational, are the sins. Since the intellectual represents the highest attribute of humanity, its perversion and misuse represents the most grievous category of sin. You can witness this kind of progression in the 
that I'm talking about in the succession of infernal guardians that Dante encounters during his descent, going from the mythological animality of the guardians of upper hell. On the left, you have the example of Cerberus, the three-headed dog guardian of the circle of the gluttons, depicted here again by the 19th century illustrator Gustave Doré. Um, and then in violence, we have the half human in the middle of the slide, half human, half bestial centaurs that guard the seventh circle of violence, split between man's animal and rational natures. The deviously, um, at the beginning of the eighth circle of fraud known as Mali Bolje, we have the mischievous devils fully human in their physiognomy. Let me just conclude by inviting you all as readers of the Inferno to begin to construct your own maps of hell, as readers have done for centuries. As I've illustrated here with a slide of a map from one of the earliest 14th century manuscripts of the poem. Here you can see the circles of Dante's hell. And also in these illustrations from the earliest printed book maps of hell published in Florence in 1506. Clearly Dante intended for you as readers, for us as readers, to make our own maps of hell, just as readers have been doing for seven centuries.